This is Steve with Dabalab, and in this tutorial, I'm going to walk through using the Ask CLI to create and manage Alexa hosted skills. So I've done a few tutorials in the past on Alexa hosted skills, and normally when um, when I'm talking about Alexa hosted skills, I'm talking about using them through the Alexa developer console, just through the, the web browser. So right here, so I'm logged in at developer.amazon.com at the Alexa developer console, and normally you would go here and to create a new hosted skill, you would just walk through the web interface here and select this Alexa hosted option and then create a skill. But what we're going to do today is we're going to do all of that using the Ask CLI. So you um, you need to have the Ask CLI installed and configured before you can do any of this. So if you are uh, if you don't have the Ask CLI installed, I'll leave a link to another tutorial that works through installing and configuring it. But you want to make sure you can just do Ask dash dash version and that will give you um, the version of the uh, CLI that you have installed, the Ask CLI. In my case, it's 1.7.17. And then when the uh, with the CLI installed, you can just go Ask, and the command that you're going to use is Create Hosted Skill, like that. And it will prompt you for a skill name, and we're going to call this Demo Skill. And then it's going to prompt you to pick a runtime environment. We're going to use Node.js. And then it takes about a minute for the skill to be created, and we'll let that finish up. Okay, and once the hosted skill has been created, you get this option to clone the skill project to the current working directory, and we're going to say yes for this. We want that skill project local so that we can make some changes and push those changes out. And there are a couple of things, if you're familiar with using the Ask CLI, there are a few things that are a little bit different when you're using the Ask CLI with hosted skills. So now um, the skill was successfully cloned. I'm going to just change into that uh, directory that was created, this one here. And um, there we go. This is all of our skill code here. Let's just go take a look at the developer console to make sure that it was created here. I'll refresh and we should see our, there it is, our demo skill here. And so um, when the demo skill is created, it's created with a, an invocation name called change me. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna change this. And normally with a hosted skill, you could just change it here and then save the model, rebuild it. But we're talking about doing all that from the CLI. So let's go over to the CLI and let's go to our models folder and then our uh, en us uh, model here and there's the invocation name change me i'm going to i'm going to change this to demo skill and save it and um, normally what you would do with a um, a skill that you're working with in the ask cli is right now you would just go ask deploy and we're going to try that. And I get this message here. You have uncommitted changes in your branch. Uh, your skill code changes will not be deployed if you don't commit them. Do you still want to deploy? Uh, this is, um, is kind of interesting here. Uh, I'm going to say no, but I'm going to talk through what's going on. So the deployment process when you're working with Alexa hosted skills, all of the Alexa stuff gets deployed this, the same way. So the interaction model and all that. But the backend code gets deployed using a git commit. So this is a little bit different. So we're going to need to use git in, uh, in this case. And I, I should have mentioned that if you, uh, well, I, I think if you have the Ask CLI installed, that requires that you have git installed also. But we're going to need to first um, commit any changes. And so I'm going to go git add. I'm going to just do dot. So to add all of the changes and then git commit. And my message is just gonna be change uh, invocation name. And now that I've committed my changes to my local git repository, which was created for me when this was all set up, I'm gonna go git push to push my changes out to the remote Git repository. And you might be wondering who created the repo and where it lives. 
And that is all a part of what is built into the, um, the Alexa hosted skills. And it's pretty cool how it works. Uh, so if you look at the ask config, you'll see this section here, um, Alexa hosted. And in there, there's a username and password that were generated for the, uh, the Git repo that was created to host all of the, um, the, the hosted skill code on the back end. So once you do this push, it pushes the code out to the, um, the hosted skill provisioned backend. So we can go back out here and um, we can look at the, well, we can't look at the code change here. Let's uh, actually, let's go to our model over here and see. If we go to our model here and go to our JSON editor, this still says change me. So the interaction model hasn't changed. I'm gonna just, we're gonna go like ask deploy right now. And um, this message here, you get the first time that you deploy a change after cloning the skill. So just say yes. And this takes, I don't know, takes a minute ish. So we'll let this finish up. All right, so now that um, our changes have been deployed, let's go back out to the web console and refresh here and take a look at this. So now you can see our invocation name has been pushed out here. Um, the, uh, the build process seems to still be running right now. Uh, the, the commit, you can, if you make code changes and do the commit, you'll see those changes here, but they won't be um, deployed until you deploy them. So let's do that and take a look. I'm gonna just change some of this text here. I'm gonna do that in our local code and then uh, commit the changes using Git and we'll see those changes reflected there. So if I go over here to my index.js file, uh, I'm gonna just change this to say, uh, welcome, what is your name? And I'll save that and then use git add and then git commit. And then I'm gonna push the changes out to the remote repo. And once those are pushed, we'll go back over here and uh, refresh. And you can see now, just by pushing, before I've done ask deploy, I have my changes here, but they haven't been deployed yet. So if I were to go over here and test, which we can do, um, Welcome, you can say hello or help. Which would you like to try? You can see that we're still getting the message that um, was the original message. So if we just go back over here and deploy our changes. Yeah, then we, uh, then we could go ahead and, um, and test and we'd see our changes. Welcome, what is your name? And so what I was curious about, um, knowing that this is using a, a Git repo, is what would happen if I make changes in the web console that conflict with changes that I've made locally and how you would deal with um, that. Uh, so, you know, would you have to resolve conflicts and stuff in, in Git? And so let's, um, let's take a look at that. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just make a really simple change that uh, won't cause a, um, a conflict. So I'm going to just do something like uh, just get rid of this comment because that's a simple change and save that and then deploy it. And then um, I'll go while that's deploying, I'll go over to my code here and make uh, a change in the code rather than, you know, what is your name? I'll say, what is your, what's your favorite color? And I'll save that, and then I'll try to commit this. So, and then I'll push. So 
So, but now uh, I'm getting a message saying that uh, the commit or the push was rejected and that's because there are changes in the external repository, the remote repository uh, that I don't have here. So that's good. So I can just do git pull to pull those changes. And I'm gonna just do And so now I've got the uh, got the changes, and uh, so I should be able to push out my changes now. So let's try that. And we'll go and we'll check to see if those get pushed out. So head over here and refresh again. Should see what's your favorite color. So I got it. So, um, so that's actually pretty, um, pretty cool, I think, because if you have a skill where you're possibly going to log in sometime and make changes through the web console and, and also make changes locally, it's all kind of wired up for you to do that. The last thing that I wanted to go through is just like what would happen if you had a merge conflict. So let's say um, that uh, you make a change on the web that is, what is your favorite day? And we save that. And save that, or deploy it rather. And then we go back over to our local code and say, what is your favorite month? So we're changing the same thing. So this will cause a conflict, a get conflict, a merge conflict. And this is all deployed. So now let's try the same thing and see what happens. So add it, commit it. And try to push it out, see what happens. I should get a, yep, I get the message saying that I need to uh, pull uh, remote changes. So let's do that. And now we get a merge conflict. So um, this is uh, this is kind of cool. Um, again, uh, I like that uh, that there's all of the uh, the Git functionality that's just kind of wired up for you and automatically works in Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code makes it really easy to deal with um, conflicts. So in Visual Studio Code right now, I can accept the current changes or accept the incoming changes. Um, or accept both. But in this case here, let's say that we're gonna um, we're gonna just accept the incoming changes the day. So I would say accept the incoming changes here, and then save this, and then and then push it out and see what happens. And now if we go over here and refresh again, there we go. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully that was helpful. If it was helpful, please like the video if you're watching it on YouTube. And for more tutorials like this, visit dabblelab.com tutorials. Thanks so much.